After carrying out all the necessary safety checks, make sure the patient is safe to have an MRI scan and bring them into the scanner room. Ask the patient to lie supine with the affected foot in the head coil or use a dedicated foot coil if there's one available. Give the patient an emergency buzzer and provide ear protection in accordance with the manufacturer's guidelines. Use some padding to immobilise the foot and to keep it flexed at an angle of 80 to 90 degrees. Add the anterior part of the head coil and plug it in. Move the patient into the scanner and centre the laser beam localiser over the midline of the foot. Now slowly move the patient fully into the bore of the magnet, ensuring they're calm and comfortable before leaving the room. Once back in the control room, select the correct patient details in the browser or type in the details manually if necessary. It's very important to get the patient details right. This includes entering the correct patient weight so that the SAR or specific absorption rate can be calculated accurately. Register the patient as lying feet first and supine. Select the correct protocol according to your hospital guidelines. Begin the scan with an axial localizer sequence. It's important to obtain good localizers in all three planes. This is to ensure adequate images for the planning of the next sequences. If necessary, repeat the localizer. In our protocol, we acquire T1 and STIR imaging in all three planes. The first sequence in this protocol is a T1 axial. In this protocol, the axial images are planned across the short axis of the foot, even though in the anatomical position this is a coronal view. This may vary depending on radiologist's preferences. On the sagittal plane, plan the axial sequences perpendicular to the metatarsals. Coverage should be from the toes back to the navicular and cuboid bones. Center the field of view on the axial localizer. Position the slices perpendicular to the long axis of the metatarsals on the coronal view and apply. For the subsequent STIR axial, you can copy the planning of the first T1 axial sequence. Check the planning in all three planes and apply. Now plan a coronal T1 sequence using the acquired axial T1 images. Align the planning block straight across the metatarsal bones. On the sagittal localizer, the coronal slices should be parallel to the long axis of the metatarsals. Make sure to cover from the dorsal to the plantar aspect of the foot. To include the whole foot, you may have to increase your field of view, depending on the pathology and the size of the foot. Straighten and centre the foot in the coronal field of view. Adjust your planning to ensure full coverage of the foot in all planes.
make sure the coils are turned on and apply. For the stir coronal sequence, copy the planning of the previous T1 coronal. Again, check the planning in all three planes, turn on the coils, and apply. You should review your images as the scan proceeds. This is the stir axial. Ensure that the image quality is adequate and that all relevant anatomy has been included. STIR imaging stands for Short Tau Inversion Recovery and it's a fat suppression sequence. STIR imaging is good for visualising pathologies such as edema and infections. Most infections and edema appear bright in this sequence. This is the axial T1 image where fluids appear dark and fat appears bright. In contrast to STIR imaging, most infections and edema appear dark. Now let's plan the sagittal STIR sequence using the acquired axial and coronal images. On the axial sequence, angle the block perpendicular to an imaginary line drawn across the metatarsal bones, or perpendicular to the coronal planning. On the coronal view, plan parallel to the long axis of the metatarsals to cover the full length of the foot. Ensure coverage from side to side. Center the foot on the sagittal localizer, adjusting the field of view or the FOV phase as needed. Check alignment and centering. Adjust again and apply. For the second sagittal sequence, copy planning and measurements from the previous sequence. Check the planning in all three planes and apply. Now let's look at the coronal images. In this T1 coronal, we're again assessing image quality and ensuring coverage from the dorsal to the plantar aspect of the foot. In this stir coronal image, you can see that the fatty bone marrow is suppressed and hence appears dark on the scans. This is a stir sagittal sequence. Coverage should be from side to side. Here, significant edema is seen as bright signal around the foot. And lastly, this is the sagittal T1 sequence. Again, we need to check image quality and ensure that coverage has been obtained from side to side.